Welcome to Cornerstone Church. My name is Laura and we're very welcome to have you back if you're watching us again and if you're new, you're very welcome. Um, so we are Cornerstone Church and our mission statement is to make Christ known and make disciples and our vision is to be an authentic Christian community serving Christ's purpose in Bristol, Britain and beyond. Today we will be having a message from Mike and the very lovely Jenny will be reading for us. I shall now open in prayer. Uh, dear Lord, I thank you so much um, that we're able to meet back in person now and we're still able to have services online for those that are unable to make it due to self-isolating or not being too far away to travel in. But yeah, I thank you that we're slowly, slowly getting back to normal uh, and we can have a wonderful in-person community again. Um, but yes, we have a message from Mike today. I pray that you'll speak to us and whatever he's talking about we'll really take it on board and carry it with us throughout the week and use it to help us live for you. Uh, yeah, I pray this all in your name, Lord. Amen. So before we move on to the worship, we will have a message from Claire. Hello, I'm Claire. I work as the Children's Coordinator and Safeguarding uh, Coordinator in Cornerstone. And I'm doing a little mini-series, and the reason for that is that the uh, children's work has grown and changed in nature and so we need to rethink how we're going to do it. And um, whereas before, we used to have one all-age group, uh, and we've got a good team, and they all work once a month in pairs uh, with the children. And um, I used to do the thinking through and planning for that, and I am doing that, uh, and uh, working out who works each week. So um, we've done that now, covered gaps, if people are going on holiday or have exams or... Uh, are pretty well. Um, I've been kind of gap covering for that. Uh, but now we spoke last week about uh, preschoolers and having a midweek group for uh, young families and the need for a toddler church on a Sunday starting in September uh, and the mid group in June. Uh, so that will need a whole new team and uh, children's church we're going to talk about today but we also will have youth. Some of ours have gone up into senior school and they'll need a separate team for that and of course Safeguarding. So obviously I can't um, head up or uh, think about four lots of plans, four lots of rotors and four lots of um, gap covering. So that's why we're doing that. We're seeing what comes forward and then we'll go back to the drawing board and uh, uh, get that going. I, I am starting off, uh, even while we're doing the process of uh, recruiting, um, I'm starting off those various groups as COVID allows. Um, but uh, as I say, we'll need more hands on deck. So if you uh, love kids uh, and if you have the time to commit uh, to once a month uh, or for running a group, uh, thinking through the planning and uh, rotoring, um, do come forward. It'd be great if you could come forward rather than us asking. That's really cool. Um, get in touch with Ray on the link below or come to me straight. Uh, that's absolutely fine. We'd love to hear from you. Um, so, let's think about the kids. Where are they at? What kind of things do they explore? So, some of them find it really difficult to um, pray maybe to someone they can't, you know, to a God they can't see um, or they can't hear. Um, and they ask questions and they're willing to explore that. Um, some of them uh, find it confusing that they have friends who worship another God and they gather and they pray and they love each other. And that we say that we have one God. Uh, but they're in the midst of exploring those questions. Um, we've had uh, one child ask, why did Jesus have to die? What a cool question uh, for the parents to have to think through at child level. Um, we've had a couple of sisters who've moved school and it was a big new start for them. And they independently, uh, the older one was uh, working out how faith could play out in that situation and encouraging her sister to think about how faith can play out in that situation. Um, so they're living it out, they're giving it a go. Um, they love games, obviously they love crafts, they love um, brainstorming, uh, uh, various ways they can stand up at the front of the church and read, they can um, do the nativity, they could be on the welcome team, they're active they're, they're, uh, and they have the skills to be able to do that. Uh, so that's the children's church and we'll be uh, thinking about the youth next week. So yeah, would love to hear from you if you feel led to do so. Thank you.
The scripture reading today is read from the International Version of the Bible and it's taken from 1 Peter chapter 1 and we're reading the entire chapter. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and the sprinkling of his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise to God for a living hope. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new births into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a while you may have 
had to suffer grief of all kinds and all kinds of trials. These have come so that uh, the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by the fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you've not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, when they spoke of these things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit, sent from heaven, even angels long to look into these things. Be holy. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires that you had when you lived in ignorance, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from an empty way of life that was handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for one another, love each other deeply and from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Good morning and welcome to our online service. Last week when I spoke, I spoke of the building blocks of the church. Sonship, fellowship, worship, stewardship and discipleship. But when we have building blocks, they need to be joined together. They need to have mortar. They need to have design. Jenny and I often look at the programme of Grand Designs. It's interesting to see the great buildings that people uh, design and build. It's also interesting to watch the, the people that are building them. Usually a couple, maybe a family, and they've got this desire for a great and fantastic building. But the journey through is very different for each one of them. Some have fun all the way through. Yet others have to go through difficulties, financial difficulties, weather difficulties, all sorts of obstacles come in the way of achieving their goal. But there is a goal. 
They have a plan in sight. They have something that they want to achieve. And it's achieved by a group of people. The architect, the site manager, the tradesman working on the site. And eventually their goal is achieved. And this letter that Jenny has so kindly read is very similar. It's written by Peter. He, if you like, is the site manager. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Peter, who had a career change from fisherman to shepherd. Who became a mature Christian after making a fool of himself. And on the day of Pentecost, he was first to preach the gospel. And he suffered for Christ. But he had the vision. And so he's writing to the church to give them guidance, to give them that aim, to pull them together. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. And here he's writing to God's elect, it says in the first verse, who are scattered. Those who have been chosen according to foreknowledge of God and Father who sanctify in the work of spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. He was writing to the very first church. He was writing to Christians who were marginalised and vulnerable. They were in that area surrounding Turkey, but later it, it expanded way beyond that. They were often slaves or disenfranchised people. They were, if you like, spiritual exiles. And because of that, they were cast aside. They were persecuted. They were persecuted by the Jewish nation because they had accepted Jesus as their saviour. They were persecuted by the Romans because Caesar was the Lord. And to say Jesus was the Lord was going against Caesar. And so whichever way they turned, they were in difficulties and they were in trouble. I remember a Bible teacher telling me, uh, using the statement, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you odd. You'll be different different to the world and different to the world's standards. And conversion to Christ put people outside of, uh, outside of society. Idolatry was the culture and the church had a set of new standards. And so Peter was writing to them to encourage them, encourage them in that time of being alone, being outcast. Encouraging them to know that there was a purpose, that there was a name. That there was a goal to build the church. And that there would be difficulties along the way. But he wanted to give them the vision that those people who on uh, the great grand designs had a vision to finish and they work towards the finish. And Peter wanted the church to have that vision. He says in verse 3, Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his mercy has given us new, a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Christ. 
there is a hope. No matter how black things were in the church, how difficult, how much the persecution, how much they were cast aside, there is a hope. And people building those houses, there, there was always that hope of completing the task. But this is different to a material house. It's a spiritual house. Jesus rose from the dead and gave us an inheritance. An inheritance for life. An inheritance, it says, kept in heaven for you. Who through faith. And faith is the centre of it. Faith in that grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith, faith in a God who wants us, who loves us. And one day we will live with him. And so this verse is, these verses are saying that we are being kept for God's inheritance. And then Paul, uh, Peter goes on to, in, in verse 7, these have come to the proven genuineness of your faith, a greater worth than gold, which perishes even through refined fire, may result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. What he's saying is that they must keep their faith. But that faith is often going to be tried. They're going to go through difficulties. Things are going to try and block their way. But even though, when they come through the other side, there's praise and glory of honour and they see Jesus. And this is a, an invitation in a way for us to keep our eyes upon Jesus, even in the most difficult circumstances. Though you've not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible, glorious joy. Faith is is in a relationship. It's not what you get. We can't sort of tick things off and say, I got this, I got that, I got the other, and, and so I believe in God. And what he's saying here is even when things are black, even when things are difficult, we keep our faith in God. And when we do this, true faith radiates the glory of God. And the test of true faith is when you put everything in and you get nothing out except the wonderful grace of God. That is true faith. And of course the, the prophets, he in verse 10, he talks about the um, prophets, prophets who prophesied the grace that was to come to them. Old Testament prophecy is all about Jesus. The Bible is about Jesus. And it was foretelling that Jesus would come. It was foretelling that Jesus would die on the cross. It was foretelling that Jesus would ri rise again because of the grace of God. God loves us so much and he gave his only son. And that was his intention right from the beginning to redeem us. And so we are living before our Father when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ. We are living in the presence of God. 
And so in verse 13, he says, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. The New King James says, gird up the loins of your mind. What he's talking about there, of course, is the, the long um, robes that they wore. And uh, uh, if they had to run, if they had to do work, they, they would have to fold them up. And we, I see this in, in India with the, the lungi. Um, it's like a tablecloth they wear. And normally it's down to their ankles, but then when they work, they fold it up and tuck it in in order to free themselves. And I suppose if it was written today, it would say, roll up your sleeves. Be sober, be alive. And set your hope on Jesus coming again. But then in verse 14, he, he, he brings a, a warning. Don't conform to this world. Don't conform to the evil desires. Ones that you had before you knew the Lord Jesus Christ. But be, but just as the one who called you to be holy, be holy in all that you do. In other words, God is holy. He's set apart from sin. He's set apart from the evil of the world. And he wants us to be set apart too. That distinction of the church is set apart from the world and sin. Be holy because I am holy. And so it goes on to say, you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down from your ancestors. Change has come about. You are new people. People who have faith in God. Through Jesus, you believe in God. He was raised from the dead and glorified God. And Paul said, so your faith and hope are in God. And finally, at verse 22 and 3, is a bold statement. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for one another, love one another deeply from the heart. For you've been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. It goes back to what we said last week. Love and care for one another is the unity for the, of the church. Sincere love, sincere care, support, encouragement. Verse 24 says, For all people are like grass, and their glory is like flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached for you. New King James says, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That's what we have. We have God's promise. We have something in sight. We, we can look forward to the day when all the dreadful things of this world will pass away. And Jesus will come again. And as we build the church, this is the mortar that pulls those blocks together. The vision of the end of the building. And a new life. So many people in, 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 in that program, after they've built their house, they've 
said, this is a new life. We, we, we're living differently. We're enjoying life. And that's what God has for us. We, we go through the trials of today with Jesus in view. And when he comes again, all things will be made new. And you may say that this scripture was for the early church and things were very different in those days. Yes, in many ways they were. And yet they weren't. Today there are still people marginalised, people who lose their lives because they declare Jesus as their saviour. You may say, but we're okay in this country. We're not okay. It's subtle. In my 80 years, I, I have seen change. I have seen the um, move from Britain being a Christian country. The days when we would have a day of prayer, a national day of prayer. It's something that wouldn't be dreamed of today. We've moved from a Christian country to a multiracial country, a multicultural country. And that's fine. But gradually the church is shrinking in proportion. Gradually things are becoming difficult to make statements. Gradually the church is shrinking in proportion. And if we're going to continue, we're going to continue to build the church. We need that vision, we need that hope, and we need to have faith in that vision. Like people building the home, whatever happened to them, whether they were battered by the weather, the money, labour problems, they still had that hope, they still had that vision, and they still went forward. And that's what Paul was encouraging us to do, and them to do. This is what this word is encouraging us to do. Keep our eyes on Jesus and have faith. When we look at this scripture, we find that in verse 3 we have a living hope. In verse 4 we have an inheritance. Verse 18 and 19, we are redeemed, we are free from the bonds of the past. Whatever our past was, we are free from it, we can move forward. Verse 21, our hope is in God and Jesus' return. We can be different and forget the past and move forward with our eyes upon Jesus. Sonship, worship, fellowship, stewardship, discipleship are the building blocks. But the vision and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the hope for the future with him is the mortar that holds it together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we have the church. We thank you for each other and the love that we share. So, Father, we want to move forward. We want to build. And so, Father, I pray that you will help us to keep our eyes upon you, to keep that hope, to keep that faith, to keep the vision, knowing that the Lord Jesus will come soon. Protect us, care for us, keep us strong, Lord. 
And most of all, Lord, we pray that you will protect our faith, that we will be ready when Jesus comes. Amen.
Thank you, Mike, for your message. Um, in terms of notices, we have a prayer meeting this evening at 6pm on Zoom. Um, and prayer is a really important part of what we do, so it'd be wonderful to have as many people as possible join us um, as we pray for fellowship and for Bristol, Britain and beyond. And a quick reminder about Claire's video at the beginning. If you would like to find out more information, please do get in contact with Claire or Ray. Uh, I shall now close in prayer. Yeah, dear Lord, I thank you so much that we were able to join either in person or online. Um, yeah, thank you for providing us for so many ways to stay in touch with church um, in these complicated times. Uh, yeah, but yeah, thank you so much for Mike's message. I pray that you will help us to take it on board and keep it with us and not just forget about it. Yes, Lord, I pray this all in your name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching the service today and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.